Hey guys, thanks for watching. The response to my last video was really great. Thank you so much. And in other videos, I have talked about how the 9-10 ratio can be a powerful tool for collectors to use to evaluate how fairly PSA grades certain cards. In this video, I'll show you how you can compute this yourself for your own research. First, identify a card that you would like to analyze. Let's do the 1993 Topps Gold Jeter. Next, go to a spreadsheet program and open up a tab. I like Google Sheets because it's free and easily shareable. Excel works great too. I've had success using Firefox as a browser. If you're having any trouble, you might want to try Firefox. Next, go to PSA's webpage and head to the Population Reports tab at the top. Search for the set that you're looking for, in this case, 1993 Tops Gold. Start at the right side of the population chart, right above the first card in the set. Click the left mouse button and work your way down the list, highlighting all the columns and grades. Bring it all the way down to the last card, making sure you highlight every player and grade on the list. This could take a while. For this set, there are 825 cards. That's a lot of data, but it's surprisingly easy to analyze it. From here, I would recommend hitting the Control button and C. That will copy all the data. You could also right-click and select Copy. Just make sure all the data is highlighted. Once you've hit copy, go to the spreadsheet. Click on the first cell in the first column. Now we have to paste the data. There are three ways. Hit the control key in letter V, right click and select paste, or go to the edit tab at the top and select paste. It may take a second to see your data fill the spreadsheet. Let's do a couple of things to make this easier to read. Go back to the population report page, go all the way back up to the top and highlight the heading that says card number all the way across to the right to total. Copy this, Control and C. Go back to your Google Sheet, click the first row, first cell, first column, and hit Paste. This will put the headings in. If you need to add a row, just right click to add one. Now click on the left over the first row. That highlights the entire row. Then click View, Freeze, and One Row. That will freeze the first row as you scroll down, making the spreadsheet easier to read. Then click columns A and B, highlighting them blue. Do the same thing. View, freeze, and two columns. That also makes the spreadsheet even easier to read. You may also want to expand the second column so you can more easily read the players' names. We have a couple more steps to get this spreadsheet formatted so it can do what we want it to. We need to add headings for the measures we are going to compute. Start at column Q, row 1, type in POP9. Go to column R and type in POP10. Then go across to the first row and type in the following headings. 9-10 ratio and total subs. When you're done, you can highlight each of these cells and hit the center commands. And also bold them. Here's the most challenging part, getting the data into a format we can use. You probably noticed that the numbers in the cells look weird. There are a series of numbers, commas, and dashes. It's just the way the spreadsheet formats the PSA data. We have to clean that up. For the first card, Robin Yao, let's look at the PSA 9 cards. You see there are 7 cards, but also a dash and a zero. Translated, that means that there are 7 PSA 9 cards, and no half grades, and no qualified 9s. You will see some cards that do have qualified grades. We aren't considering those, so we need to exclude them. We only need to know how many straight 9s there are. Here's the formula we're going to use to clean up these cells. The formula is listed down below in the description box, so you can just copy and paste it into your spreadsheet. The formula should work as long as you paste it into column Q, row 2. Notice how it refers to cell N2. Make sure that's correct. That should be the cell that contains your PSA 9 data. We need another formula to figure out how many PSA 10 cards there are. Use this one. Paste it into column R, row 2. Double check to make sure that the number of PSA 10 grades from column O is correct. Let's move on now to the 9-10 ratio. Here's the formula for that, very simple. That's going to give you the number of 9s to 10s. Wow, it's really low for the Yao. There are 33 10s and only 7 9s. For our last column, let's add up all the submissions, including all the qualified and half grades. They count towards the total subs. Here's that formula. Make sure you get to 42, though by the time you're watching this video, the pop could have increased. 
When you get to cards that have qualifiers and half grades, you want to double check that it captures all of those submissions in the total. Okay, now we're going to clean up the data a bit more. First, let's highlight the row of cells and hit center. Then click on that long number in the 910 ratio. Go to Format, Number, and then Number again. That will put this number into two decimal places. Much easier to look at. Okay, here's step one of the magic. Let's transfer these formulas to every card in this 825 card set. We're still in row two. Now highlight cells in columns Q through T. In the bottom right corner, you'll see a blue dot. Click on that and drag it down a few rows. You'll see that all the formulas transferred and populated these other rows too. Double check to make sure the formulas are accurate. If they are, click on the blue dot and drag it all the way down to the end of the sheet, to the last card. That will populate all the formulas. Probably the first thing you'll notice is that some of the 9-10 ratios have an invalid number. That's because there are zero tens for that card. You can see why. Some of these cards only have one or two submissions ever to PSA. That's okay. We can work with that. We have a couple more things to do to clean this data up. Believe me, once you do it once or twice, it goes a lot quicker. Go down to row 50, Brian McRae. See how it says 2,000 under total cards and 2,002 under total subs. It's some kind of translation error, but it's easy to fix. Highlight column P, go to Format, Number, and Plain Text. Then go into the cell that says 2000. You have to manually correct it. Go to the cell and type 1, space 1, space 0, which is what it really should read. Hit Return and you'll see the correct number shows up in the total subs. I think this happens in one other row, 653. The correct reading for the total should be 2, space 1, space 0. One more thing to correct. Go to row 99, Jeter's row. See how there's a comma in 5402? The comma screws up the total number of submissions. Go into the cell and just delete the comma. That fixes it. Okay, it's time to wrap this up. Go to the top of the spreadsheet, all the way to the left, and click on that empty box that intersects the columns and rows. That will highlight the entire spreadsheet. Now, hold down the control key and click on that first row. That will unhighlight the row. We don't want to do any numerical analysis on a heading. Now go to Data, Sort Range, and select Column S. Then select Z to A. That will sort the spreadsheet by the highest 9-10 ratio down to the lowest. Now again, there are a lot of cards in this set without 10, so scroll down to row 491. Jason Kendall is the first card with a 10, and it has the highest 9-10 ratio. But there's Jeter, ironically, right there at number 2 at 7.56 to 1. That means that PSA gives out 7.5 nines for every 10 they give. We already know that PSA is really tough on this card, since it's the second highest ratio. But for more detail, let's figure out the average for the entire set. We need a formula for that. Click the Jason Kendall 9 to 10 ratio cell and hold down the left mouse button, bringing it all the way down to the end of the spreadsheet, to the last card, number 824, Russ McGinnis. Release the mouse, then go up to Insert, Function, and Average. That will give you the average 9-10 ratio for all the other cards that have a 10 that's graded. You can see the average is 0.56 to 1, and man, that's low. That means that for cards that have a 10, there are about twice as many 10s as 9s. Now compare that to Jeter at 7.5. That's a huge difference. Another example where PSA is very, very reluctant to award a 10 for a mint card. I'll just say a quick word about the 1993 Top School Jeter. It represents 56% of all the 1993 Topps Gold cards ever submitted. There are so many commons with low submissions that you might think a comparison is impossible. But consider that the Jeter card has a higher 9-10 ratio than any other Hall of Famer in that set too. That includes Ryan, Griffey, Ripken, and many others. To me, there's no doubt that Jeter is one of the toughest 10s in this set. Let me know down below if you have any questions. You can also email me and I can try to walk you through this. I'd love to see people use this method to examine other key cards in the hobby. If you do, let me know. I'd like to see what you've come up with. Thanks a lot for watching, and check out some of these other channels that I'm enjoying right now.